Hi everyone, Jen and Adam here. It's cold, it's winter. We're getting our seeds organized and ready for the coming year. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to show you guys our top 10 cut flowers that we grow here on the farm. If you guys do enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe button because we're doing this all season long. We are opening up the doors and showing you guys what it's like to run a flower farm and what we do here throughout the year. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to share these videos with you guys. This is fun. It's nice and slow this time of year, so it's great to put these things together. It gives us time to think about what we're doing for the coming season. We're about to get our greenhouse heat turned on and ready to start seeds in there. I'm excited. Move up from the basement. Yeah, that's the favorite part, and that's when you know it's like game on. You're ready to rumble. And it's a little warm oasis outside. We grow a lot of flowers here on the farm. It was hard to narrow this list down because there's a lot of favorites. Number 10, we'll start with straw flower. So what we like about straw flower is the incredible texture that it has. It has these papery type petals that as you run your fingers over them, they feel like straw. I love straw flower because it has that old fashioned look. It has a wild flowery look. Pollinators really love it. Straw flower also is a really great dried flower. It dries really well and holds its color. So straw flower, number 10 on the list. Oh, Check okay. it out. Number nine is coxcomb, celosia or celosia. We really like this flower because it comes in either a crested or a plumed variety. We love it because it's again another multi-use flower. We like coxcomb because it is very tactile, again like the straw flower. It has an old-fashioned look that we really enjoy. And it's a very interesting shape if you look at the, the crested versus the plumed. But, but it also adds a lot of visual interest from a textural standpoint to a bouquet and it comes in so many various colors that are amazing to use in bouquets. These old-fashioned varieties are our favorite varieties. Number eight on our list is snapdragons. Snapdragons are a great producer for us in the spring and the early summer. They have an amazing fragrance. I love the, the fragrance it gives off. It really is an old reminiscent kind of smell for me. It adds a great spike and a nice pop of color to our market bouquets. And seeing a row of snapdragons in the spring and summer is a really beautiful sight. Number seven, Cosmos. I like Cosmos because I use the, them in a lot of uh, design work for weddings and events. They're beautiful, they're special, they add a lot of airiness into design work that I do. Cosmos are a really prolific performer for us in the summertime. And here's a secret about Cosmos, you can use the greenery as filler in bouquets. Number six, Lysianthus. It is an incredibly long-lasting cut flower. It is ruffly and beautiful. I like to use it a lot for wedding work. So again, for weddings and in my floral design, it is the perfect little focal flower to kind of tuck in with roses and some of the other elements I use for, for from a design perspective. Lizzie's can be a challenge to grow from seed, but definitely worth the challenge. Number five on our list, ranunculus. I love the Easter egg colors of ranunculus in the spring. Adam's actual favorite colors of ranunculus to put together are pink and orange. I like ranunculus because they last forever. I really like ranunculus because while they're producing, they produce heavy. They're a really great spring heavy hitter. Ranunculus really enjoy cool soil, so once the soil gets warm, they quit pumping out blooms. Ranunculus are another challenging flower to grow. If you want to see more information about growing ranunculus, check out our video. We'll be putting a video out here in a few weeks. We're going through the process with our ranunculus right now, so we'll show you how we do it here in a few weeks. So number four, sunflowers. We love sunflowers because it's a really good focal flower for our bouquets for market. A field of golden sunflowers at sunset is one of the most epic sights on the farm. The pollinators really love sunflowers. We love growing them because we see all of the bees and butterflies all over them. It's amazing. If you walk into an entire field of sunflowers, the entire field is humming with bees and other pollinators. Just like the bees like sunflowers, People love sunflowers as well. If I can use the pun, it draws them in like bees to honey. Sunflowers are an easy grower. You can direct seed them. They keep up with the weeds very well. But the trick with sunflowers is cutting them at the right stage. 
This is a great stage to harvest your sunflowers in this picture right here, right when the petals are starting to unfurl. Number three on our list are roses. I really love growing roses because I love using them in wedding and design work, which you guys have heard me talking about so far. I like growing old-fashioned varieties of roses. I really love growing roses in the garden because it reminds me of my grandmother and growing up and running around her garden. I love the fragrance of roses, how they just have that ruffly texture. A garden full of roses is a wonderful sight and smell. Number two, dahlias. Dahlias or dahlias. There's three different ways you can say it. Or more. Dahlias were really tied for first place. They are one of our biggest mainstays here on the farm. We love growing them and we love the beauty that they provide for us in the late summer and early fall. I like dahlias because they come in, in various shapes and sizes. We grow basically a rainbow color of dahlias here on the farm. They can be labor intensive, but the juice is definitely worth the squeeze. Okay, our number one flower. It's a little unassuming, but it is the heaviest producer throughout the summer, and that is zinnias. I love zinnias because they are an, a consistent performer. It's amazing also to look out at the flower fields and just see this beautiful rainbow-colored mosaic. It is the most incredible sight. Zinnias really love the hot weather and climate of central Iowa. Zinnias are also great because it's one of the butterfly's favorite flowers. Here in central Iowa, we're a part of the monarch migration. In late fall, usually, we'll have the monarchs start to migrate their way down, and they usually make a stop at our farm. If you guys have a favorite flower that we didn't mention, list it in the comments below. We'd like to hear what you're growing. Thanks for joining us.